Just like shooting ducks out of a barrel, we have it all here on Drop Your Buffs, a podcast discussing Australian Survivor. On this episode, we'll be discussing the Australian Survivor episode that aired on Sunday, the 11th of September. So if you haven't seen this episode yet and don't want to be spoiled, please leave the Tribal Council area immediately. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just go to dropyourbuffs.com for more details. My name is Stuart, and as usual, we have our co-host, Craig. How's it going, Craig? Hello, Stu. How are you? Had a good weekend? Not too bad. Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Pretty Excellent. good. Good to hear. It's always good to finish a, oh. a good weekend with a, with oh, a, with a is, top episode like that. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't really know where to start with um, what, we've just, what just happened. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was. It, we had we had two cracking challenges, Absolutely. and then we had a, a pretty surprising pretty. tribal council. Really, oh, I mean, it had been kind of uh, you know sort of teased a bit by by the uh, by the producers on Twitter, mm. though. But, uh, but still, it was a great tribal council. Well, no doubt, we'll talk about it later. But gee, there's a, there's a bit to talk about what happened there. That's was, right. um, that, as you say, it was a it was a cracker. <laughs> well. The episode opened pretty much with with Craig talking about because I think the last episode he just found that clue in the uh, but hadn't looked at, at it and we hadn't seen feast. it either no yeah. and so we assumed it was about clues for a new idol and and, and it was I did love his comment it's like winning bingo but I can't yell out bingo yet okay <laughs> well, that was that was awesome <laughs> uh, and then we're over at Sanapu and they're talking about it's day twenty so I guess that that puts a nice exact. Mm, 20, on it for us, so. 20 days. It's 20 uh, days. They're a fair so. way in now. That's, I mean, that's nearly three weeks. So that's that's like, a long, long way into this game. But if are, you're in America... It's only have, just started. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, exactly. In, in our version, it's only just started. If you're on the American version, you're a good, you know, not quite two thirds. Oh, you're halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we first talked to Jenna and she's saying that she feels like a lone survivor, yeah, which I can, I can, which was, which was entirely what the purpose of of what Snappy were trying to do was to make her feel That's like right. a lonesome. I mean, that was the plan. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's not in an ideal position there and looking for any angle she can possibly find. Mm. 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 I, I, I have to say, though, I'll back her to do it. She's uh, uh, she's she's she, pretty tough. She, she is tough. She's tough. She's smart. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident she'll be all right for a while. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, especially if they keep winning challenges. So it's, well, you know, and that, <laughs> anyone on that tribe is That's fine right. if they keep winning, winning challenges. But, uh, you know, I'm, I, 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 I like the way Jenna Louise is playing. Mm. Not mm. taking a backward step. No. <laughs> and then over at Vival, we've got uh, Christy's been spending some time with Kate. Beach headstands. Yeah. What's, well, I was guess it it's yoga? A... Was it beach yoga? Will we call it that? I wasn't sure really. Maybe maybe beach handstands is like the natural progression of yoga. Is it, you know, <laughs> look, it looked, it, look, I, I, I can't I can't do a handstand at all. So I was just pretty impressed by the whole thing. I have to say, um, but uh, yeah, look, good to see beach yoga, beach handstands, whatever it is, we love it. Keep it going. Well, I think if you're a castaway and you feel like you aren't getting enough screen time for each episode, just do something on the beach like that and, well, you, and, you're, and you're guaranteed to get on, aren't you? That's true. And but Christy, of course, did have an ulterior motive. As she said herself, she's trying to be likable. Ah, oh, right. Trying to be more likable, she said. <laughs> now, Phoebe said that she was worried about Kat. She did say she's because worried about Kat. Because Kat's smiling She's happy lot. and smiling. Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's always very suspicious when someone smiles a lot, isn't it? So it's but she said <laughs> something very prophetic as well, and that's um, she thought Cat could flip easily. Mm. We'll come back to that. Yes. <laughs> but they knew that she was like that anyway, because <gasps> as soon as they as they had that um, as soon as they had that merge, you know, it was it was obvious how quick Cat flipped over to you know, to this new tribe that was going to suit her better. Oh, absolutely, definitely. She's not doing beach handstands, but she's certainly doing cartwheels. Um, <laughs> so uh, um, she, uh, uh, Kat thinks she's in a pretty good spot, but wasn't happy about Rowan still being there. Again, we'll talk about no, that later. No. <laughs> <laughs> then back over at Sanapu, they get some tree mail. They did, but first, before they got tree mail, they got yep. really happy music. Oh, really happy music. Happy music, yeah. Oh, yeah, as they, as they flew down the beach in their drone or helicopter or however they film it. Uh, and we, we're going over to Sanapu oh, and they right. played this exceptionally happy music. They are clearly painting, well, at that part anyway, they are clearly painting them as happy Sanapu. That's the party not, tribe. The party <laughs> tribe. Everyone's, everyone loves each other. It's all wonderful. And then you've got loser tribe for vow. That's definitely <laughs> how they're trying to play. But it was just exceptionally happy music. <laughs> yeah, well, the dream that they got was about the next challenge. And it's, it's a chance to get clean. 
and this is this is a, a fairly common. We've uh, seen this before, haven't we? Survival challenge, yes. So, and Snapu, they were they were very confident. In fact, it was they were almost a bit annoyingly confident, weren't they? It was just a bit. It was a bit much. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah. Well, that's the sort of tribe they are, aren't they? <laughs> now, with this with this mud challenge. Uh, <laughs> the prize was was their own little spa afterwards, which which they quite frankly probably need after having that mud uh, challenge. Yep. Well, even without the challenge, even after being as we said, twenty days, you <laughs> you, you <laughs> definitely want to wash. Well, did you hear that JLP said, "Come on in, guys"? Yeah. He, oh, no, uh, did he? Yes, he did. Are you sure? He did. He I said, didn't. "He said, come on in, guys." I thought, hang on, isn't that exactly what Jeff says? That is exactly what Jeff says, and I did not hear that. What so. does he? What does JLP normally say? What's his uh, version? Over of here, it? people. Yeah, so something yeah. like that. No, he definitely come said, "Come on over here." Come on in, guys. Come on in. Oh well. So I, I, there well, you go. Well done. Well spotted. I didn't hear that one. And I liked how when they were describing the challenge, how they have to basically collect all this mud on their on their on their bodies and have it scraped into a trough. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was it was called a trough because basically it's a pigsty. Yep. And then there's a trough. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. And you're just getting all this mud off your tribe mates. Oh, it's a it's a it's a shocker. That tro- that, that challenge is a shocker. I couldn't believe how virtually everyone was just throwing themselves mm. into that mm. into that mud Lee, pit. Lee particularly. And, Lee, I mean, and it didn't look that deep though. I, no, no, that's right. <laughs> it wasn't that deep at all. Probably had a bit of giving at the mud just to sort of stop them from hitting the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. Lee yeah. was in there and he was piling it on his head and he was carrying handfuls of it and he had it on his arms and I mean I I think he was a big reason why um Yeah, you know, I why Snarpy went on to win that. He's, he's win just that such shot. a strong competitor, Absolutely. isn't he? And he's big, obviously, so he's got more. He's just got more surface area, hasn't he? Yeah, but I wonder whether girls with long hair have got a good I chance think, to really get, think, get a fair bit of mud think, there too. <laughs> I think that would definitely help. Uh, Phoebe was certainly very enthusiastically getting in there and putting her head, putting her head and her hair and everything in there. So, mm. yeah, oh, gosh, what an amazing challenge. And didn't it generate some good lines? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Can, can we talk What's about those on, about? Our, <laughs> on our G-rated podcast? Okay, go for it, Craig. Can we do it? Yep. I, I, look, my favourite, I don't even know who said it. Uh, I'm hoping you can help me. I don't know who yep, said it. Yep. But someone said, you can grab my doodle if you want to. I, did not, I, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that? No. I don't actually know who said it. Okay. No, no. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it's... I think that they I think that the Australian survivor is just a little bit more liberal than the US <laughs> survivor. They I don't think that they would allow that sort of thing. No, no, no they wouldn't and, allow that. Sort uh, of thing. They don't, they even pixelate bottom cracks. I well. know, which, they're, not, they're not doing that in this show. No, are. that's right. That's mm. right. So there's yeah, so there's a definite line there that we have crossed here in Australia. Oh, so. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to go back and have a look cuz I actually don't know who said that, but uh, I distinctly heard, ah, that, heard well, that mention. And then I think and then eventually Jail said I can't even tell who's who anymore. <laughs> and it got very confusing towards the end. That's right. No, well, the quote that I thought you were going to say, was that the only quote that you had? That's the only quote I was going to say. Oh, that was my favourite. okay. No, well, the quote that I heard was, don't worry, just grab anywhere, mate. I think it might have come immediately after that. And that was, I thought I thought Brooke said that. No. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a great way to get to know your tribe members, isn't it? That's right. So it was a, <laughs> it was a great icebreaker, really, wasn't it? That, I mean, really, like, perhaps they should have that challenge on first, really, you know, because it's a bit of a... <laughs> you know, for the first episode, like, oh, yeah, maybe because yeah, you know it's a good icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's uh, one way to get to know everybody. So, and Snapu won that one, obviously. So, if you saw the episode, you would have seen Snapu win that one. So, and they head over straight over to the to the uh, to the spa. They did. Lots of bonding going on. Yes, yes, I. I wasn't sure if it was one of the rules or they only had so much water that they had to share showers. <laughs> what, you know, <laughs> what was going on there? But <laughs> yes, well, I, I don't know. You could be right. There could have been a water restriction, but um, <laughs> we saw some interesting pairings or couplings and groupings of, of people in there helping to get all the mud off. Mm, that's right. Then we hear from Jenna and she's saying that she's identified herself and Kylie as the outsiders. Mm. And she thinks she can get L and Lee on their side, mm. and maybe Sam. Yeah, Sam was yeah. mentioned as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess that was just a few inklings that didn't really come to anything for this particular episode. But yeah, but uh, keep keep an eye on it, and see where it goes. Um, and then look, it's a. You know, I think it's a. You know, we talked about Jenna Louise before. She's playing a very clever. I think very clever, sensible game. I think she clearly feels she's on the outs. She's identified that Kylie is clearly on the outs, and we know that from history of this tribe 
Um, as we talked about last time, I'm not entirely sure why, but um, that does seem <laughs> to be the case. Um, so starting to find some alliances there, I think is a good thing. And then if you can bring along some other people, it's interesting to see how that'll play out. Exactly, mm. exactly. Well, then over at Vavau, we had Rowan was trying to get Connor and Andrew over to their side. Yeah, but before that, we so. had the water that looked like a Darwin River, according to Sue. That was a great line. Yeah, I like I that like one, that actually. Line. Yeah, it's so so she's obviously from Darwin, I guess. Is I, I have absolutely I, no idea, to be honest. I thought I had a I feeling she that's was from WA. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because if she's in customs and I guess I sort of think of um, Darwin as being like the front line of customs in some well, some respects, isn't it? Maybe she maybe she knows Darwin. I don't know. but uh, <laughs> and I, I haven't been to Darwin, so I don't know Darwin either. So my apologies to people listening in Darwin. But um, yeah, the water looked like a, a, a Darwin River. <laughs> now, Andrew's talking about Rowan. Mm, and, delusional. Um, yes. And also not the sharpest pencil. No. He was not the sharpest <clears throat> implement a couple of times, actually, tonight. Mm. Oh, yeah. the, someone said he wasn't the sharpest pencil and someone said he wasn't the sharpest tool on the shed. Oh, okay, right. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I think Andrew also called him, a, he called him a typical model. He did. And I thought yeah, that was just, a bit harsh. A bit, that was, yeah, that's a bit condescending, isn't it, to models well, in general? Just I, a I bit, would have thought. just a bit, yeah. <laughs> but of course, then he went and absolutely supported all of those statements. Yes, that's, yeah, that is true. That is by, true. It's a bit hard to defend Rowan, isn't it, really? Uh, yeah, after what he did next, after spilling the beans on, on the whole history of what had happened back at Aganoa with wanting to vote Cat out and... Um, and why does he always every time he had one of these conversations about Cat, she was standing within three metres. Why, yeah. why did that happen tonight? Yeah, it's I know it's, Hearing it's it crazy. All. It's Hearing crazy. it all. So anyway, so then of course Andrew goes straight over to Cat. He's such a liar, she says. <laughs> great big <laughs> smile on her face. A great opportunity. And then Andrew gives us that line: "Shooting ducks out of a barrel." Shooting ducks. Yeah, the tagline yeah, for right. tonight. Yes, that's right. Is it? You know, it's <laughs> there's so many to choose from. You really could have gone with any any of any number of great lines tonight. Well, I hope Andrew comes out with some more mixed idioms because it's just, it's 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 very it's very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. I, I I love some of the things Andrew says, but I mean, Cat had some good ones too. He's such a liar, and then she said, "Dumb Rowan's the least favourite person I've met in the last twelve months." <laughs> I mean, that's a big call. Yep, that's right. No, she's <laughs> she really doesn't there's like certainly him. No love lost there. No, that's for sure. Now Craig's looking for the idol. Yes, and. I didn't really catch exactly what the clue was, but something about a majestic tree, was that yeah, right? Yeah, it is a majestic tree. It's um, off to the east, so we had to work out which way east was. And the clue suggested that the only time of day you can get it is at low tide. Okay, so he hadn't worked out the low tide part himself. That was just a given. It was. Oh, it was, it was just the way it was it? expressed. It was pretty obvious. It sort of, you know, I can't remember what the exact wording was now, but uh, yeah, you, it, it wasn't going to be possible to get it at high tide. Well, that does make it pretty tricky for him to try and get that. It really narrows the window of opportunity, doesn't it? Absolutely. But what a clever strategy. They, he sort of, you know, I think it was sort of given to him into his lap almost when everyone else said, oh, we just sit around camp and we don't really know what's around and we need to get some food and maybe there's more food over there. It all sort of fell into his lap. He said, well, why don't we go exploring? Clever. So, of course, he can't act. I mean, he can, he can sort of look for the tree with the rest of the group and, that's right. and then come back later by himself. Exactly. Exactly, and I'm not, I'm not clear whether he worked out which tree it was. I mean, no. We know because we've had more drone footage of it, but yeah. um, it wasn't made clear whether or not he's actually worked it out. I suspect maybe he hasn't, but I, no, it didn't I guess seem like that. It was, it was a, was it a big white sort of a like a dead looking tree? Very, wasn't it? Or? Yeah, it was very Winterfell esque. I thought. Oh uh, yeah, Game ooh, of, Thro- Game of Thrones reference there. <laughs> now, Snapu have just finished their spa. Yes, and they've and they've come back to their camp, and it's it's raining, and it's uh, and the camp is a complete disaster zone. Yeah. Everything's wet. Everything's wet. Big storm. Pretty miserable night over at Vavau as well. Yes, that's right. Yep. So it would be horrible, wouldn't it? It really would. Yeah, like, it's it is probably it, it is hard to imagine if you haven't oh. had to live through that. And I haven't really. I don't think I've had that sort of experience no, before. I, myself. I haven't either. And I mean, they're not even in a prop. I mean, you can you can probably tolerate it if you're in a tent. If you're out camping and you're in a tent. Yeah. But they're not even in a tent. They're in a it was probably a lean to at best and it leaks and it would it would be pitch dark where they are it would be it would be just awful yeah exactly awful exactly but having said that it's amazing how much energy they could put together for that next challenge which was the and, water basketball and didn't they <laughs> didn't they need it for the water basketball that was brutal mm. brutal well you know it was it was just such an exhausting challenge even just 
You could just see it. They were it just, was, yeah, I know. They, they were just spent by the end of that. They were shattered. Well, I yeah. was I, when I was having a brief scan over Twitter, I saw uh, Matt uh, from Survivor. He actually tweeted about it, and he oh, said, really? "He said that last round of basketball went for th- over thirty minutes." Really? Surely enough time for me to get a tan. Surely. <laughs> well, one thing one thing I noticed, I was watching it with my parents, and we noticed they all appeared at the end of the challenge more, a lot more sunburnt than they had at the start. Ah. And that might explain it. If that last challenge went for th- uh, the last round went for thirty minutes, I'll, they'd had four rounds before that. They'll probably have their two or three hours doing that. Well, I think I saw something from JLP, and he said it was it was over an hour. So maybe just mm. that last round maybe was, was, was long. Um, particularly long. But wow. uh, but they but they seem to spend most of the time just grappling each other and not yeah. actually playing the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, look, that was I, I thought it was a, a sensational challenge. I know we've seen it before in the US version or a version, at least a version of it. I just thought that was fantastic. And there were some real stars. Sort of, um, I thought, um, you know, Kate performed pretty well. She looked like she'd played a bit of netball in her time. Well, she got two baskets, she, yeah, didn't she? Yeah, she, she was great. Kylie, she Kylie put in a fantastic performance. Yep, she did. Um, Sam was amazing as always and ended up with a wedgie at the end of it. And uh, that final shot from Matt. From Matt, that's right. Matt, magic that Matt. Was, that was, that magic was just <laughs> absolutely sensational. Yeah, well, he had, he had all the time in the world to line up that last shot. 30 and minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not quite. And... He, he he seemed to be playing it very cool, didn't he, with that mm. with that final shot? And he final did, shot, you know. He made it look easy. Make actually, because yeah. that basket was high. It looked it was small. There was no backboard on it. Uh, that was that was would not have been easy. No. Well, the question that always raises in my mind when I see these sorts of challenges is where do they draw the line in terms of how physical they can get? Because you know, because they're really going head to head here. Yeah. And uh, there is a, a real chance of people being injured. Well, particularly in that one too, where people are being held down and they're in and they're know, held under like they're water in and of water, exactly. I mean, I, it was, and you could see. I think it was uh, Craig. I think had scratches all over him. Or was oh, it, did he? Nick, sorry, it was Nick. I think Nick had scratches oh, all okay. over him from it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was there was nothing easy about that challenge for them. I know because it, it, because it would be hard to know how how far can I go when I'm when I'm sort of mm. contesting the ball here. Mm. It's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I thought it was a cracker. Really, yeah. really loved that challenge. It was great. Now, that one was won by Snapu again. Mm-hmm. It was. Won that one. On a bit of a streak. So that sends Vavau to Tribal Council. Yes. So then we let the scrambling begin. Yes, that's right. The scrambling begins. And Rowan was telling Sue that, did he tell her directly that he had the idol or was he saying generally he and Phoebe have this idol? What was the, well, the thing there? Well, I think what happened there is there was that conversation going on um, and, and, you know, there'd already been that, we'd already seen that conversation that Phoebe had. She was concerned she might be going home and so she was trying to get something going with Kate who said, no, I'm just going with the flow and I really don't know what the deal is yet. Mm. Next thing we're back at, back around the fire and Sue asked Rowan if someone had the idol. Wasn't well, She wasn't right. specific about who, just said, does someone have the idol? Um, and he just blurted out that, yes, there is an idol. Um, and that, uh, yeah, it's, but it's probably not going to be played tonight, he said. And of course, Cat hears it all, <laughs> yet again. Um, so then the knives are out for Rowan. Well, this is, this is really a... Will he play the idol? Yes, well, it, this was really a red, a red flag to a bull t- mm. for uh, Craig's perspective anyway. So I think he said that this is a directive to attack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good line too. And, um, but, and, you know, and that's what always happens. If, if there's any hint of an idol anywhere, that's yeah. all people focus on is that's getting right. rid of that idol, which, yep. which is true yeah. because it's that unknown that you just can't bank on yep. until it's gone. So exactly you, right. and you someone have with to a, focus someone on with an idol, if they're in a strong alliance with somebody else, that uh, means that it's potentially difficult to get them out and you don't know what they're going to do with it. Uh, yeah, no, idols, idols are dangerous <laughs> if you haven't got one. <laughs> now, Phoebe thinks that she's the obvious target because if they went for her, that would isolate Rowan but still keep him as a player in good for challenges. Yeah, from the physical point of view. Yeah. That's right. And then then by voting her out, she had she had the stronger social game, so they wouldn't have to worry about her anymore. So yeah. she was really feeling like... Oh, um, she was... She's, she was the uh, one. Look, as the votes ultimately turned out, she was probably right to feel that way. But um, she was... Uh, yeah, she, she clearly felt vulnerable and, and you, you could see the, de- you see the desperation there. She, she, she looked like she thought she was in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And, you know, right up to the very end, you know, there was that final conversation as they were almost like, minutes before they were leaving for tribal council with who was that, Christy and uh, it, was, it must have been Kat. And mm-hmm. they're still talking about what they're mm. going to do. She was clearly scrambling and, and very, very concerned that she was on the chopping block. 
That's right. But clearly something else happened at camp that we never saw until later. No, that's right. Mm. That's right. Well, should we talk about tribal now? We should talk about tribal council. Now, we heard from Andrew a bit and uh, he... He's he he has a very dry delivery, doesn't he? He speaks <laughs> he, in a very measured way. He, he does. He's he's um he'd be a bloody good politician, I reckon. He just when he says things, he's yeah. thinking very carefully about what he says, and he's not giving too much away, and he's being very diplomatic, and yeah, he, he sounds like a, he sounds like a politician. <laughs> no, he certainly doesn't let too much out, does he? What what I thought was also quite quite uh, interesting about just the seating position of everyone at that tribal council. Actually, I made that comment too on Twitter. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, did you? I, yes. I, yep. I haven't seen your Twitter feed yet. So, <laughs> yeah. So you had, um, you know, the, the five old, we'll call them old Vivao. The f- they were all sitting together, and yep. then you had the Aganoa guys all sitting together down the left. And I, I, that, that's always, um, I think, instructional about where the alliances are and how people might vote. And I remember, remember Tina Wesson, who won the Australian version mm-hmm. of, you know, the, sorry, the, the Australian series of American Survivor way back in probably about 2001. Season two. Season two yeah. it was. Um, and I, I remember reading an article that she, uh, an interview that she gave once where she said that's what she always looks for, who's sitting with who mm. at tribal council because it's very, very instructional about how things might play out. So ever since I've read that, I always sort of keep an eye on that. And tonight it was as clear as day, I thought, how it might, how it might go. Yes, well, it certainly made it easier for them to for the for the four on the left to to um, make some last minute plans basically while they're still yeah, well, at tribal. There was Although that scram- didn't really play out either, did no, it? No, so. <laughs> obviously there was a mad scramble going on, and um, I mean, Cat basically lied to her face, didn't didn't she? Mm, I mean, mm. Fabi Turner said, "You know, are you with me? Yeah, hundred percent, I'm with you." And, <laughs> and she sort of looked away as she said it, and I thought, "Oh, that doesn't look good." Absolutely flat out lied to her face. It was. Um, wow. She's not gonna. I don't that, think that, that she's going to, you know, Kat yeah. will have trouble making alliances, I think, in the future uh, because no one can trust her anymore, I don't think. No, not after doing something like that. No, no. that's right. I'd, um, one thing I thought in tribal when Phoebe was talking and she, the way she's talking, she still seems she still seems to be playing the, the ditzy blonde sort of a, a character, I thought, which, yeah. is what, which is what her original plan Do was. Do you think so? Well, Phoebe you're talking about. Phoebe, yeah. I don't think so at all. Well, that was her original plan was to not, Try and look as smart as what she was, yeah. And and but uh, I think her subsequent actions have given that away. I mean, I, I think she's playing a highly strategic game. Yeah, well, well I, I think she's playing that, but and I'm not I think sure. everyone recognizes that. Yeah, too. Well, that's what I wasn't yeah. sure about whether people really see her as a real player or whether they still think of her as as a, as a bit of a dumb blonde type sort oh, of uh, I character. Don't, but, well, um, I, don't, I don't think they do. Um, right, I don't think they do. I think they I think they see her as dangerous. Um, I guess after 20 days, they yeah, should have... No, well, that's right. You know. um, dangerous, obviously, in a fairly tight alliance with Rowan. That's been pretty obvious for a while. may not have been so obvious to the, the old Vavau members because they weren't there to see it, but mm. we've certainly seen that coming. Um, so, again, clearly she wasn't being taken into their confidence and there was that whole you know, um, statement by Andrew about, you know, I'm talking to specific agon- uh, specific members here and she's going, what, 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 what's that all about? I don't know about that. So... Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I think they can't. They'll keen to get rid of her. <laughs> when we get to the vote, well, with the, with the voting, I, I, I thought what the plan was before tribal started was that the four of the of the old Aganoa tribe, or um, uh, yeah, we had Rowan, Phoebe, Cat, and Christy. Mm. I thought they were all going to vote for Sue. I thought that was. The plan well, they thought that's, they were going. That's to what do. it looked like. Yeah. That's certainly what it looked like. And there was a bit, again, as I said before, there was that mad scramble just before they left, and mm. so it sounds like it wasn't locked in. Um, look, in hindsight, that probably would have been the best thing for them to do, as the, in terms of the way it turned out. But um, well, yeah, but because really interesting the way this whole vote went. I, I it was know, absolutely fascinating. Well, Rowan voted for Cat, which I completely wasn't expecting because I, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, I, no, that's right. Um, and he said something about. Saying that that's what he uh, um, that he gave his word that he was going to vote for Cat or something like that. Well, wasn't should it? we just give before we sort of get into the analysis of this? Should we just give it the context of you know what, what, the way the votes actually turned out? Yep, go for it. So the way the votes turned out was Phoebe got five votes, Rowan got two, mm-hmm. Cat got one, and Sue got one. Phoebe then played the idol, um, which presumably because Rowan's had that as far as we know all this time. So Rowan must have given that to her at mm. some stage. So mm-hmm. that saved Phoebe. But in doing so, um, it exposed Rowan. Um, That's right. So Phoebe five, Rowan two, Cat one, Sue one. And 
had so so it was Christy and Kat voted were the ones who voted for Rowan. So Aganoa voted for Rowan. Mm. Um, Phoebe seemed like she didn't really know what to do and just said, "Look, it's Sue simply because it has to be someone who's not me." Um, so she's she's voted that way, and then of course, as you say, Rowan had voted for Cat, which was a complete surprise. So three of the four Aganoa members voted for someone from the Aganoa Aganoa Alliance. Mm. Um, amazing. Yeah. And if if Rowan hadn't voted for Cat, if he'd voted for Sue as well, yeah, then they would have had a. Um a two all split then, wouldn't That's they? That's right. And then, and then, At least you got a shot a, then. A revote, which I'm not sure how that would have played out. So, I mean, clearly they didn't have um, they didn't have it all locked down between the four of them. Uh, there was obviously no. It was just a real shemuzz one. And, 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 and even Phoebe and Rowan, who we thought were very tight, didn't have it locked down either. No, because you've got because uh, <laughs> Rowan's voting for Cat. So. Uh, it was it was a bit of a mess in the end, and um, if they'd been a little bit coordinated, a bit more coordinated about it, well, Sue probably would have been going home. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so, but I mean, but on the other hand, I mean, big risks. The 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 the, the old Vavau members took a huge risk there by putting all their eggs in one basket and going for Phoebe. They very nearly lost one of their own. That's true. But what I don't know is is did any of that any of them know what Cat was going to do though. Oh, I don't know. Maybe no. they did. That's possible. Maybe they did. Because maybe, maybe Cat said, "Look, we'll vote for Rowan just to just to, just to throw two votes his way." Mm. Yeah, but, that's right. You know, and then and then and then that way, either of those two are going home, and everyone's happy. So. Well, that, that's possible, of course. But if they didn't know that, uh, they took a massive gamble, mm. Mm, and that's right. uh, it could so easily have backfired. If if, if even if um, only um, Christy and Cat had gone a different way, uh, it could have been all over Red Rover for any of them. That's right. So yep. it was it was a fascinating, fascinating vote, that one. Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. And Rowan clearly did not see that no. coming. He well, was we, completely blindsided by that. That's right. Yeah. Well, we had... Well, I think he said, wow, I think three times after yeah, that. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah he, uh, and I sort of feel a bit sorry for him. He obviously, obviously in the end, after all that hoo-ha we had in previous episodes about how they, he and Phoebe had the deal about who would get the idol and he ended up keeping it, which wasn't really the deal... It sounds like eventually he's done the right thing as part of you know, that arrangement. He's given it to Phoebe. It saved Phoebe, but at, mm. at the cost of himself. Mm. So it was a. It would have been a, a fairly um, a fairly galling sort of um, tribal council outcome for him. I would have thought. I mean, apart from the fact he's voted out. Um, yeah. Did you hear what JLP said at the end after the the votes had been read? Oh, and something so about a divided, very divided tribe, something like that. I know, which which sounded like a bit of just a like a. A run of the mill comment, but I thought, are they really divided? You, you had five people vote for for Phoebe, you know. Well, it's, it, old Vavau, old Vavau undivided, clearly. Yeah, so you know, like it wasn't that much division. Although in that tribal council, there were um, there were votes that were thrown towards four different people, and mm. that doesn't happen very often. No, it's, that's it's, right. It's normally two, maybe three, but it's very rarely four people. There was a, a funny little thing. Uh, also, while we're talking about JLP, he said something during that tribal council, which I think may have given away the way the votes were going to fall out before he read them out. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you remember, but he so he came back. He, he he collected the votes, brought them back. Phoebe then played the idol. He said, "Yes, this is a genuine immunity idol." And then he said something like, "Any votes for Phoebe will not count. The next highest number of votes will will go." He said something like that, which suggested ah, to me he already knew yeah. the outcome. He already knew that Phoebe had five. Right. It was, I think it was a slip of the tongue. Oh, okay. Right. I think it was an absolute <laughs> slip of the tongue. But and you sort of you know it's subtle. But if you sort of think about it, you think I think. He said it with knowledge that Phoebe was going, right. and so the next the next one down would be the one. That, <laughs> did you, did you, didn't pick no, up that? No, 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 no. Yeah. no Just a thought. Lot. Anyway, <laughs> so that was that for old Rowan. Well, is it time for the sad music? Yeah, I think so. Well, tonight, Rowan, we'd like to I'd like to say something in the words of Derek Zoolander. If there is anything that this horrible tragedy can teach us, it's that a male model's life is a precious, precious commodity. Just because we have chiselled abs and stunning features, it doesn't mean that we too cannot die, that we can't die in a freak gasoline fight accident. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's but, absolutely brilliant. Sorry, Rowan, the tribe has spoken. Now, on to our best moments. Best moments. Best moments, um, best moments for you, Craig? Oh, look, I, ha- I have to go with um, that tribal council and you know, Phoebe scrambling halfway through and... Being, you know, just just all of it, you know, being lied to a face, and because you know, that won't come back to haunt Cat, will it? Um, you know, just just uh, absolute cracker of a tribal council. Loved it. 
Well, I still like Andrew's shooting ducks out of a barrel, <laughs> yeah, which he's, he, he said that twice in the episode, too. It was oh, twice. Oh, I, I definitely heard it once. I don't remember hearing it twice. So and, yeah, I think, and I think when you, when, you, when you mix up the sayings like that, it just takes all the menace out of it, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. yes, it does. But it's good to see Andrew has a sense of humour, though, because... Uh, because he had, because he had tweeted about, uh, you know, about so joking about the fact that he mucked up that saying. So that was quite <laughs> funny that that, uh, that that he recognised that. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> good on him. Now it's on to tweets. Oh, the chi- well, the old. <laughs> the, the that's old, Chester. Uh, yeah, that's Chester that's the Chester. chicken. That's not a tweet. <laughs> Well, I had the one from from Magic Matt before about the the basket brawl going over thirty minutes, but the but the did other you call one it, did you call it a basket brawl? Well, that's what, what he called it. Did he call? Is that what he called it? Oh, basket okay. brawl. So I'm not sure if that's the technical term. No, it might be. Uh, but one from Brendan Atkins was uh, he he said, uh, and this was in response to that that same basket brawl challenge, the wedgie that stopped a nation. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mention that before, but yeah, Sam. Sam did get. Oh no, I did mention that before, didn't I? Yeah, Sam got a hell of a wedgie as part of that process. Was it Sam, Sam and was, was he brawling with uh, Lee? Was it oh, Sam it was and Lee. Lee? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all the tweets that uh, that I had. Have you got any other Survivor news, Craig? Well, you know, again, I, I always come up with these things that aren't really news, but um, something I discovered during the week is you can actually bet on the the outcome of Australian Survivor. Did you know that? No. What you mean? You mean officially bet? Officially bet. So officially bet. Now there's for uh, real money. For real money. Real yeah, money. Put real money down. Um, not uh, survivor auction dollars. No, 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 no actual not survivor, money. No, not <laughs> survivor auction dollars. Actual real dollars. I'm not going to name the, the the company that I found that's doing this. But um, who do you think? Who do you think is the favourite at the moment according to this online betting company? And I'll give you the, the price is two dollars. You can get two dollars for a dollar down. You can get two dollars back if this person wins. Right. Okay. Well. I don't know for sure, but just 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 judging on the um, Survivor fan league sort of thing that they have on the Channel Ten website, Andrew was 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 well ahead of anyone else. No, and, uh, that's not Andrew. No, not even close. Not even close. Uh, oh, no, it, it's pretty hard to tell at this stage, really. It, it, it's, it's, I, it's too far that, out. That's what I think, and that's why this is just so fascinating. Christy, Christy is Christy. currently Christy is currently the favourite to win Australian Survivor at two dollars. The next nearest is wow. Lee at five, and Sam at six. Then the then you've got Matt, and this is the order. Then the order of the odds then goes Matt, Nick, Craig, Flick, and uh, and Flick. They're all at fourteen to one. Then you've got L, Jenna Louise, Kylie, and Phoebe. They're at sixteen to one. And then you start getting really getting to the rank outsiders. Then so then you've got Kate, Brooke, Andrews at thirty four to one. Connor's at thirty-four to one, and then you've got Cat and Sue at fifty-one dollars. Wow! So that's but as of and that's been updated since uh, the episode went to air tonight. So really? I, I just thought that was absolutely fascinating. That is amazing because Christy is probably the one of the least uh, people I thought that would have a chance of of uh, winning this Survivor. Yeah, well, you, know, you just never know, do you? I don't know how they can really get away with that though, because in something that is is a pre-recorded TV show, there are people out there who, who know. Yeah, well, well, they know. They probably know who the final two or three yeah, are. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. So how can they really? Mm. You know, and, and look, there is a disclaimer on the website that says that that uh, this is a pre-recorded show. Uh, the outcome may or may not be known. Um, but uh, anyway, that's just it's, that rather news. Let's call that trivia, a bit of trivia. But it's still not very ethical, though. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, there are risks with it, but um, that is um, that is um, yeah, that's survivor betting. Very good. Well, thanks for that, Craig. That was that was quite interesting. Well, that's it for the show then. That's what we've got time for. Well, thanks again, Craig. That was a that was a great discussion and uh, another 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 top. Uh, start to the week with that Survive episode. I'm not sure how Monday and Tuesday are going to play out. No, but hopefully it'll be look another great episode. They just keep pulling these wa- amazing episodes out. It's um, I'm loving the series. It's just brilliant. Well, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Craig. See you. See you later.